order the Cleveland Planning Commission <coughs> meeting of August 20th, 2019. Roll call, please. Terry Clark? Here. Pam Hawk? Here. Joe Davis? Here. Matt Twiggy? Here. Matthew Lund? Present. Uh, everybody has seen the agenda for tonight. Any questions? Uh, adoption of meeting minutes from previous meeting. I can't remember the date. The 6th. The 6th. <coughs> Any changes, questions? No. Okay. Uh, let's jump. <coughs> Announcements, awards, appointments, anything tonight? Lucy? get into the heart of this uh, business requiring open hearings. Uh, we are here tonight to hear a conditional use permit 2019-002 and a variance uh, with the same properties of uh, number 2019-001. Applicant is SAC Wireless, Purple Bridge Wireless Communication Facility. Is your mic on? I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, very hard the mics are for recording, not for um, audio. I'll try to speak up. Could you speak up a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't accuse me of yelling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, before we get going, I want to go over uh, hearing rules and permit review conditions. Hearing process. The commission will hear from staff and applicant, followed by the hearing. During the hearing, each person who wishes to speak about the proposed project will have three minutes to verbally present their comments at the podium, starting with their name and residential address. Uh, this is your opportunity to get on the record, so please do so. The commissioners and staff will not be answering questions during the comments, as this is a time to hear testimony. After the hearing closes, the Commission will deliberate and determine further action. Hearing rules. The meeting is recorded. Minutes and testimony are part of the public record. Testimony will be accepted only if it is applicable to the matter being reviewed and the development and approval standards. Any part that wishes to receive, any party that wishes to receive a copy of the decision may do so by adding their names and mailing or email address on the sheet on the table by the front door. Audience disruption may, ca may be cause for action as deemed appropriate by the commission. So please do not disrupt this meeting. We want to make sure that everybody is heard. What can the city do? The city can regulate placement, construction, and modification of personal wireless service facilities. That's 47 U.S. Code 332C7A. What the city cannot do, the city cannot regulate on the basis of health impacts unless proven to exceed the standards approved by the Federal Communication Commission. Section 704 of the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which provides for the FC to regulate human exposure to radio frequency emissions, states that no state or local government or instrumentally thereof may regulate the placement, construction, and modification of personal wireless service facilities on the basis of the environmental effects of radio frequency emissions to the extent that such facilities comply with the Commission's regulations concerning such emissions. The City cannot prevent a tower from being located in the City of Cleveland. The City cannot reasonably discriminate among providers of functionally equivalent services or prohibit or have the effect of prohibiting the provision of personal wireless services. Staff report 14 days in advance of this hearing for your review. 
Um, the staff report was based on the website along with all of the application information. Um, the CEPA was completed May 29th after a 14-day comment period. The staff report was combined site and design review, variance, and conditional use permit, but since the site design review is administrative, I do have to provide you with a staff report. I just included it in the same document, but that will not be um, part of the hearing today. The hearing will only be for the conditional use permit and the variance per municipal code. And um, I really don't have any further comments for you because you've had all the materials to review. If you have any specific questions for me ahead of the hearing or after, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions from Liz and Lucy? No? Okay. I, I do want to tell you what I've included in your packet because, you know, we've gone um, paperless, so we haven't been giving you packets. Um, I did want to do that um, today because I couldn't possibly put all of the materials on the screen at one time um, and so that you could look through them during the meeting. So the original staff report, then also um, the email of August 18th that um, included some additional comment material that we received, um, uh, as well as some photo simulations I believe we'll see tonight from the applicant. Then um, the agenda staff report, which we'll talk about after the hearing. Um, and what I received so far this afternoon on a petition and another, um, another comment. Those were paper clipped together, and that's what I referred you to when I was passing out other petition forms that we received tonight. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Is the applicant? Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> ready to do your presentation? Absolutely. Okay. Um, board members, I appreciate the time you've uh, you've given uh, Vertical Bridge. Uh, to present here. Um, my name is Matt Grugan. I am the Senior Project Manager with Vertical Bridge. Uh, I build towers for Vertical Bridge uh, across the entire Pacific Northwest, starting from Colorado all the way up into Alaska. Um, it doesn't even cover into uh, Northern California. Um, SAC Wireless is my co-applicant. Um, I do have a representative here, uh, Ben Varen. Um, we are uh, both on the application. Uh, but Vertical Bridge uh, will be uh, the tower owner uh, and the one handling the construction for the tower, as well as uh, the leaseholder uh, with the city as the tenant uh, on the city property. Um, I do want to start by saying thank you uh, to all the residents that showed up uh, on uh, July 31st when we conducted uh, the meeting uh, over at the senior center. Uh, it was a two hour meeting and it went the entire two hours. There were a lot of passionate folks there, um, and I do appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's, I, I don't want anyone to think I, I don't. I, I zone towers weekly uh, across, like I said, the Pacific Northwest. Um, there are some communities that don't show up and don't represent and don't have passion for their communities, and, and that can't be said here. Um, Cleone's a beautiful town. Uh, in the past two years, I've been here over a dozen times, probably closer to 18 um, scheduled visits and unscheduled visits to, uh, to look at this site that we're speaking about specifically as well as other sites uh, earlier on in the process. Um, it's, it's nice, uh, a comment was made, um, I think it was kind of made out of, out of anger last time when I was here saying I don't care uh, about the city of Cleon or, or the landscape or anything like that or the trees, I couldn't be further from the truth. So um, <clears throat> I do want to at least make that uh, known. Uh, like I said, we are uh, uh, Vertical Bridge. We are based in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Um, we have been in existence for almost five years now, 2014. Uh, October 2014 is when the company came into existence. I joined a few months after that in March of uh, 2015. Um, and since that time, we've become the largest private tower owner in the United States. Uh, it was a position that we previously held under uh, another company name uh, called Global Tower Partners. Uh, they were in existence for 12 years, and uh, that's, that's the business model that we are, and uh, we're just we're, we're good at what we do. Um, we, like I said, we've been working on this project uh, for about two years. Um, it had started prior to Vertical Bridges' involvement. T-Mobile and SEC Wireless uh, came to Clee uh to identify uh, properties uh, within the city um, outside of the 
basically how cell towers work. Um, uh, RF engineers give a, a Latin along somewhere uh, in a town, a community, in a county, um, and say, hey, this is the epicenter of where our coverage needs are. Um, and then what they'll do is they'll draw a, a radius around that and say, if you can get me uh, a willing landlord um, who meets um, um, uh, you know, the code and, and can get zoned, uh, that's where we'd like to place the tower. Um, so that's how the search began. Um, we started in the city of, of Cleon. Honestly, I was speaking to Ben earlier because uh, because Ben's relatively new to the property or to the uh, project. Um, the Bank of America, uh, just on the other block, is what we considered center of town. Um, and what we did was we based that based on the mountains on this side, the road on that side, and then the east west of of the town. Um, and then they drew uh, a radius uh, around that, and that's how we began. Uh, the be the search began. Not unlike any uh, search we typically do. Uh, we first come in and we want to talk to the jurisdiction, let them know what we're doing, um, see if they can help us out, uh, maybe give us guidance, um, uh, you know, kind of dig into the code, figure out what, what we can and can't do. Um, that's what started uh, talks with the city. Uh, we had begun looking at several properties um, in and around the town, down uh, along Main Street uh, towards the railroad, um, and even on the east and west side of town, um, you'll see that in the display. We ultimately decided uh, on the hilltop uh, for a few reasons. Um, first and foremost is it's, it's a wooded area. Uh, it's, it's kind of the most remote area um, of the properties that we looked at. Um, it is up and out of the way of uh, the downtown um, and the residents. Uh, I do understand that there are some residents uh, in front of the tower. Um, that have some concerns about it, uh, but as far as aesthetics wise, I'm not placing a tower and this was a major uh, uh, concern uh, from our standpoint as well as the city standpoint when we were talking about these is, you know, what we need in order to provide the coverage that we're looking for um, is 150 feet. Um, the, uh, if we're placing 150 feet down within the city, I'm putting a, a tower uh, up in front of Peel Point, which I was led to understand is a a uh, pretty significant uh, landmark here in Cleo. Um, another reason why is, you know, a lot of these trees, if you walk out the door and look towards Peel Point, those are all deciduous trees. They all lose their um, leaves over the winter, whereas up behind the hill are all uh, pine trees, um, and, and they keep their, their needles the entire time. So um, that was one of the contributing factors, probably the most contributing factor, uh, of selecting that uh, property up there. Um, I put together a slide uh, to uh, help demonstrate what it is we uh, were proposing. Um, basically, it's a project overview. Uh, it is a 150-foot unmanned tower facility uh, that will be capable of holding uh, three broadband carriers. And when I say broadband carriers, we're talking your major wireless providers. That's AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, uh, Verizon, uh, and then local uh, affiliated uh, wireless carriers like maybe Cricket Wireless or stuff like that. Um, it also has the capabilities of holding smaller uh, um, users, um, E911, uh, local fire and police, uh, if they choose to do so. Uh, wireless internet has become uh, a, a regular tenant of ours, and um, companies such as that who use wireless transmissions in and around the area. Um, uh, T-Mobile is slated to be our first tenant, uh, and they'll be installed on the tower immediately upon our uh, construction completion. Um, so to give you an idea of the timeline of, of a construction of a cell tower, it takes us roughly about 45 days uh, from us beginning, starting, coming out and, and digging the foundation, hole pouring the pier, uh, and then stacking the tower and, and building the facility around it uh, to uh, us being 100% complete, power out to the, to the property, and then ready for uh, our wireless tenant to uh, locate on that tower. Um, and then after that, it takes about two weeks for the tenant to do their install. Um, and what the tenant does is they'll come on, they'll come out, they'll set their ground equipment, uh, they'll run their lines and antennas up the tower, um, and then come back through uh, with my uh, construction team uh, and do a punch list to make sure that what they've done and what we've done uh, has been uh, not only up to our standards, but also up to the jurisdiction standards and the federal standards that we have to build and buy by. Um, so we want to make sure that all that's uh, adhered to and built uh, in the manner that we represent in the zoning, uh, as well as construction phases uh, of the, uh, the permitting process here in the, in the city. Um, <clears throat> the proposed tower uh, will improve in-building coverage 
uh, throughout the city of Cleo. Um, we showed a slide at that community meeting um, that showed, and you'll see it in here as well, that there is a huge gap for T-Mobile specifically um, in the city of Cleo. This tower at that specific point uh, is going to uh, fill that hole. And what that does, it does connectivity um, from um, Roslyn uh, along I-90, uh, continues into the city of Cleo, and then you'll see clearly as you leave Cleo, that's a coverage gap again. They're, they're going to continue going down uh, I-90 and probably hit uh, in, the, in the months and years to come uh, the, uh, the, the smaller towns uh, going east out. <clears throat> um, from this point, you can, you can cover all of Cleo, as, as I mentioned, uh, as well as traffic along I-90. Um, the main important thing here isn't necessarily street traffic, it's, it's in building coverage. Uh, so our, our you know, uh, uh, residents who have T-Mobile or want T-Mobile uh, will be able to use it inside the homes. Currently you can't. Um, I was in the senior center for two, two hours last week and when I came outside, it wasn't until I got up towards, towards Roslyn where all my, uh, my emails and my text messages started to come in. Um, so there is a definite need uh, here within the city. Um, the site location, I'm sure everybody's familiar with it, it's on 5th uh, uh, Street, right up on the hill. Actually, if you were standing at the Dairy Queen and looked up the hill, it's almost dead straight up there from that location. Um, we intend to install an initial 40 by 50 fenced area. Uh, we do have a, fit, uh, a 40 by 100 uh, leased area uh, per the contract that we signed with the city. Uh, but initially, we don't want to disturb that much property. We don't need that much property right now. Uh, we are building just enough to uh, include T-Mobile and their ground equipment, as well as a future tenant that we plan on having come aboard within the next three to six months. Um, and that will be sufficient room for two carriers. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the, the fenced area will run along the south side of the existing park access trail. Anyone who's been up on that property knows there is a uh, uh, quote unquote road that runs through it, at least a two, two, uh, two tire track uh, trail that runs uh, from uh, the east side of Fifth, uh, or from, yes, uh, the west side of, of Fifth Street all the way over to uh, where it terminates into just above the, the Beale property. Um, utilities will be run underground along the access road. Uh, we uh, are proposing, obviously, to have a retaining wall on this site as well uh, to hold the compound flat. Um, and to help with the drainage, um, obviously this this uh, this plan uh, and the proposal uh, of the uh, um, tower facility will will have a drainage plan, and we meet all of the current or will meet all of the uh, uh, requirements of the, the city from a building code and drainage code standpoint. Uh, propagation maps. Uh, I want to show these. We got a lot of uh, suggestions from uh, not only uh, the residents um, who proposed some properties. Uh, after the meeting, uh, one thing we did was emailed uh, at, the, at our request. I asked uh, some of the residents, all the residents actually, to put down their, their contact information uh, on a sign-in sheet, and those who wanted to be contacted uh, left their email. I emailed all of them, and some of them actually emailed back uh, suggestions on locations that uh, they wanted us to look into um, and do some propagation maps to show uh, what the site would look like and the coverage would look like from their properties. Um, so I not only did their properties that were given to me via email, but I also did uh, the properties, the other properties that we identified uh, prior to selecting, uh, ultimately selecting the one on the top of the hill. Um, and you'll see, before I get into these, there's not much difference. Now obviously when you go east of the county, um, you start to get into a coverage gap of what we're trying to uh, collect on the west side. Um, that's obviously not ideal, but the, the uh, the sites to the east and to the center of town, there's not that much of a difference, and I'll tell you why. What I did was I painted with the same color brush, right? So I didn't want to use any of the zoning restrictions that would have limited tower height or anything like this. What I said was, I'm proposing a 150-foot tower on this hill, and if I'm going to uh, put it on their property, I would need a 150-foot tower as well. Um, so I did it all the same. 150-foot tower, regardless if it would be uh, approved through zoning, could get through zoning, whatever. Um, I, I just showed every one of them being a 150-foot tower and what the coverage would look like. Uh, so the first one, sorry, is our current candidate. Uh, this is uh, the city of Cleo um, without our tower. Uh, so green is what we're looking for. Uh, that's in-building coverage. Yellow is you can get it uh, in a car or on the street. 
orange and red are very bad, you have no coverage. Um, so we want to keep the connectivity, obviously, uh, of, of green as, as much as possible. Um, yellow yellow is, is decent and okay, but we want to keep it as green as much as possible. So this is our current coverage, and you'll see it even better on a slide later on. <clears throat> All we're going to do is click. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller texted uh, or emailed me uh, coordinates to a property that sits just off the interchange. Uh, there's a DOT property that you'll see we looked at uh, earlier. Uh, this is Mr. Miller's property. It's a two-acre parcel. It's a triangle piece. Mr. Miller, am, am I, is that correct? Yes. Two-acre parcel. Two-acre parcel um, uh, that sits just off the interchange. Um, as you can see, the green is consistent. Um, it, it, it meshes up pretty well. This is, again, a 150-foot tower. We don't know if setbacks will, will uh, be able to work on a, a two-acre parcel, but uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to keep everything uh, the same, just showing what propagations would look like. Green uh, runs consistently through Clean starts to get uh, sketchy uh, as you get out to the west side of, uh, of the, the city. Uh, this is uh, uh, Leslie Pepin. Is Leslie here? Leslie uh, sent me uh, a few emails um, and actually gave me a few calls. Um, Ms. Pepin has a 500 acre parcel um, mm -hmm. up on the, the northern east side of the city. Um, as you can see, this, I mean, a 500 acre parcel is great. Um, and maybe in consideration for, depending on location, for something that would be connectivity to the Cleellum parcel. Uh, however, you see where the green starts to separate and you get yellow and orange uh, in between the, the, um, the green from uh, Roslyn, which creates a coverage gap, um, which is uh, ultimately not um, what RF wants. Uh, so this is a, a less likely uh, opportunity here. Uh, actually, this would be considered, that would be considered one that RF would not uh, um, go with. Um, uh, Beal property, am I, am I saying that last name, are the Beals here? I did speak to the Beals. Um, I got a phone call from them. Uh, they live at the other end of 5th Street on the east side. Um, they uh, mentioned that they have an acreage, uh, a small acre parcel, uh, not, much, not much smaller than uh, Mr. Miller's property. Uh, they said they would be interested there. I think this, from a location standpoint, is pretty similar to what we're currently proposing on the city property, uh, seeing that it's just a few hundred yards away. Uh, but it does have that continuous coverage. You do see that yellow coverage gap um, from in-building. You lose in-building in along uh, I-90. I um, this is what I call the Murray property. Um, this was presented to me uh, from uh, a person that has... Uh, relatives that own property, and, and her name, her last name was Murray. I don't know if the owner's last name was Murray. Uh, but they have property uh, located here in the city of Cleon. This is actually just a few blocks uh, uh, to uh, our west, um, going towards uh, the, the supermarket. It's um, the commercial property right across from Flight Pole Park. Right on the corner. That's exactly right. Right on the corner of 1st and South Plain. Correct. Right. That's exactly right. Um, so this property, uh, again, is a smaller property. I think it's a two-acre parcel. Um, but 150 foot pole, you do see uh, a little bit of coverage uh, missed, but it is starting to close that up. Uh, this, is, this is actually a, a decent property um, from a coverage standpoint. Uh, this is the interchange um, just south of, uh, am, am I pointing right? Yeah, <coughs> to the south. Mm -hmm. um, this was, this actually, it, it works out fine. There's a little bit of white, or I'm sorry, yellow uh, along I-90. Um, from a development standpoint, it's a flat piece of property. Uh, the problem is, is I'm going to be sticking a large pole right in the view of Peel Point. This is, this is why, this is the main reason why this, this property was not uh, selected. Because you'd be having a, a nice tall pole right in the middle of your view, or most of your residents' view right down to Peel Point. Um, same could be said for this future dog park. Another good property from a coverage standpoint. Um, and one that we, we actually did a little bit of work on. Uh, we did a survey out here. Uh, we were interested in this park, but ultimately when we got into it, um, this property is, again, in the view shed of Peel Park uh, with all the deciduous trees around it and everybody who is sitting up on this hill looking at that beautiful mountain and the sun and all that stuff would be seeing a cell tower right in the middle, um, which is why we did not choose this. Wastewater treatment uh, plant, this is very similar to the Pepin property. Uh, it is to the west. It, it, it increases your, your in-building in coverage gap. Uh, this was not... Uh, uh, approved by RF. Um, it did not have the connectivity they needed. 
Uh, the water treatment plant, which is on the northwest side of the city, does have that connectivity, uh, just like Mr. Miller's uh, two acres off the interchange. Um, it does have a seamless connectivity. Uh, it does have problems connecting to the west side uh, as, as, as well as the other sites uh, did, uh, but still a, a decent location. Um, uh, and then the DOT right-of-way property, um, this one was, I mean, it's a good location, but the, prop, the problem is, is DOT right-of-way. You'd be uh, constructing an access that is probably not constructible uh, right off a of main interchange uh, into city. Um, usually those locations are used for DOT uh, uh, staging, stuff like that. I don't know if DOT's ever done it up there. Uh, only in the state of Florida were we ever able to build at a DOT right So chances of ours uh, being able to build out there is, is very, very slim to them. Photo simulations. <clears throat> in our main package, uh, we presented some photo simulations uh, to uh, the city. Um, since that time, and, and due to uh, some of the concerns of the citizens, we've redone them since our July 31st meeting. Uh, the first one is going to be, and I apologize for it being so small, but this one is going to be uh, a street view, um, and this is from 3rd Street and Wright Ave. Um, there's one of your residences taking a walk uh, in the neighborhood. As you can see, if you can see my stylus, that's the pole. Um, and honestly, we, we, had a, uh, we had trouble identifying how tall those trees were uh, to determine how tall that pole would stick out. Um, actually, after going up and taking a look uh, at the United States Cellular Pole that's existing on uh, the west side of the city, uh, that is actually built to the same height as our proposed pole uh, would be. Um, and that pole actually sits pretty good with the treetops um, in level. It does stick out a little bit more. Um, so that pole is actually a misrepresentation. It would be uh, a, a little bit lower than what it is now. Uh, we did want to show it. I didn't want to do a slide where you wouldn't be able to see the, uh, the pole. Uh, I don't think you guys would believe me if I showed you the pole. That, didn't, that wasn't visible. Um, this is one from the hillside up on um, the, 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 where the compound area is. Uh, you can see the little uh, the pre-photo that we took uh, before we did the sim. Uh, everybody's aware of the slope that's up there. Um, this side of this side of the photo right here is where your road is. Um, and you know this kind of slopes off towards the city if you're looking at it this way, um, down into uh, Cleon. Um, this is a retaining wall. This is our 40 by 50 retaining wall. Um, we colored it, uh, you can color the concrete. Uh, we colored it brown uh, to match with the surroundings. This is a uh, this is a, uh, a chain link fence with, uh, that is black. Uh, we will have it um, manufactured black, and we also have black slats uh, that go in through the chain links to help the screening process. Um, and then the pole that we are uh, um, um, proposing, um, we did a lot of work uh, with the city to try to identify a color that would most match the trees up in the surrounding uh, uh, hill. So uh, that's how we came to that color, green. Um, these can be colored any way they want. Standard, typically uh, what we do is it's a, it's a stainless steel chain link fence, it's a stainless steel pole. Uh, we don't ever, I, most of the times, I'd say 90% of the times, we do not have uh, this visual screen uh, that we put in the chain link fence and foundations are usually concrete gray, not brown. Um, we're trying to work with the city as much as possible uh, from a concealment standpoint um, and make it as aesthetically pleasing as you can for a cell tower. This is a view uh, from the road, trail, whatever everybody wants to call it. This is your initial view looking over. Um, this is obviously down the slope. This is looking eastbound. Um, your compound would start after this tree, uh, and then the pole shoots up uh, into, the, uh, into the sky from there. And this is from the other side. Uh, this is the other side of the tree. That was the same tree. If you're looking, that's this tree. Um, this is back down the access road. I thought of some guys pretty good. Um, does the shadowing and all that stuff. So here's your compound gate. This is your pole in the compound. Uh, again, the green matching the tree. Um, looks, pretty, looks pretty good to me. Um, project history and site considerations. This is just an overview of basically what I've talked about. Uh, that we have exhausted a search over multiple properties uh, in the city of Cleone. Uh, we explored several different sites. 
Uh, we discussed the proposed options with the city of Cleelum. We decided that this was the most desirable and sought to uh, get a, uh, a, a site lease on it. Um, I was in here uh, several months ago in front of the mayor and the board um, to get that approved. Um, we selected, uh, T-Mobile selected the city of Cleelum. Now, this isn't just a vertical bridge uh, requirement. I failed to say that. Uh, I do need my carrier to approve uh, the location. Obviously, I'm building it for them. Uh, with no T-Mobile need out here, there's no vertical bridge. Um, so this isn't just a vertical bridge coming out here and saying, oh, the city of Cleon is, is interested in moving forward. Let's lock them down and, and you know, market it and try to see who we can get. Uh, we, we had to work uh, exclusively with, with uh, T-Mobile as a, a partner of ours on this, um, and they were one of the driving forces to tell us what worked and what did not work. Uh, Vertical Bridge accommodated the city of Cleon and the final site selection location. Um, we explored the site, as I mentioned, on the hill, excuse me, to keep away from the city center, factored in obstructions of view to PO Point, as I mentioned. Uh, we produced uh, geotech reports, drainage reports, site plans, stormwater pollution prevention plans, all that stuff uh, in our proposed uh, zoning application to the city. Um, and, and all that's in, in files uh, uh, if you need to review. Um, these are the original sites uh, considered. So you saw a number of these uh, mentioned, actually you saw all of these mentioned on those uh, propagation maps. These are just the locations uh, in the city. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with them, I'm sure none of you aren't. Um, this is the location roughly of, uh, of where the tower is going to go in relation to the other ones, where the, where the stylus is. Community benefits. Uh, I know your community would say there's none. <laughs> no. uh, we uh, believe otherwise. Um, we consider this to be the least intrusive site. Uh, it's a big park, um, and, and I know I know the the, the, the property being a park um, has has raised the ire of a lot of folks in here. Um, but it is a large parcel, and it is mainly an unused parcel, um, and it is uh, a, a pretty vacant parcel, um, and is up and out of the way of of the city. Um, in the day-to-day -day activity. Uh, much like that tower up there, it took me 15 minutes to find it. I can see it from the town, but when you get up there, unless you're looking for the chain link fence, it's, it's pretty tough to find. So it took me about 15 minutes, I found it, I walked up it. Please. Excuse me. I walked up it, so it'll be similar if not done better, uh, because technology has changed. Our bowl will be uh, better, obviously. This thing's been here for a while. Uh, our, uh, our gates and uh, restricting access, uh, vehicular access, uh, from both sides of uh, the trail out there uh, will be better uh, and be accessible not only by ourselves and our tenant, but also by the city, by the utility, uh, and by uh, fire and safety as well. We'll make sure we have locks out there for all parties to be able to access that if need arises. Excuse me. Hold on a second. Can, yes, sir. Can the audience please remain quiet and allow the applicant to finish his proposal? Thank you. Uh, because no, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Um, because the tower facility is unmanned, um, you know, obviously cell towers don't require a person on site. Um, we will have zero impact on water, wastewater, and traffic. Uh, that are city utilities, which usually have uh, um, a, a big bearing on whether or not projects are approved or, or not approved. Uh, so water and wastewater is not uh, needed on these sites. Uh, power is really the only initial. Uh, uh, utility that's needed out there and when and if fiber becomes available up in that area uh, that would be uh, brought in along the utility uh, 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 easement as well. Um, currently uh, they'll use uh, uh, broadband measures uh, and shoot uh, their backhaul out uh, until fiber is, is able to be brought in. Um, and the traffic uh, obviously is another big one. Um, we have, uh, once the site is constructed, uh, there will be a, a maintenance tech on site uh, roughly every 40 to 60 days. And it's for regularly scheduled maintenance. Uh, they, do, they do a loop and make sure they get them in every two months. Um, and what that is, is they come in, they come out with a clipboard, they do a check um, if there's landscaping needs, if there's something that's uh, out of the ordinary, something a mess in there. Um, they'll either fix it themselves, uh, they have a pickup truck uh, with some equipment uh, to handle that type of stuff, or if it's tower related, um, or, or uh, should I say uh, crew related, meaning I need two or three more guys out there uh, to handle something. 
um, they'll schedule it to come out there and, and uh, take it, uh, take care of it ASAP. Um, we also, uh, we also, uh, I don't want to say rely on our landlords, but they become a uh, a good uh, partner of ours um, in identifying um, site uh, site issues. Right. So um, if this is on city property and someone's out taking a walk or complains about it and says, hey. One of the slats is broken, or uh, you know, so on and so forth. There's weeds growing in there. Um, we'll get a site tech out who, who lives right in, in Seattle. They could be out there in an hour. Or if it's a, a maintenance-related issue to uh, something regarding one of our tenants, they could be out here in, in about 24 hours. Um, so uh, for for the city, uh, this is a positive increase to the city's tax base. Um, you get a monthly rent, um, and overall. Uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, oh, it's only for X amount of dollars a month that you're putting this in a park. Um, I think they're they're very short-sighted there. This is a this is a long-term lease uh, where the city uh, stands uh, to gain hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, that in that increases uh, with each tenant that I add to uh, the uh, tower. So, uh, like I said, we have an initial tenant, uh, which the ground or the ground rent starts at uh, when we install immediately. Um, and then, like I like I projected, uh, in three to six months, we'll have that second tenant on there. Uh, we've already gotten uh, talks and confirmation that they'd be interested in going if this does get approved. So it'll be a two tower, a two tenant tower, almost almost immediately, um, which uh, only increases the revenue for the city. Um, revenue to the city, uh, you know, helps helps in a lot of things. Uh, you know, uh, tax increases, uh, fundraisers, stuff like that. Um, you have a, a relied upon steady stream. Uh, that you can dedicate that you know funds wouldn't wouldn't elsewhere be uh, received. So, um, so uh, positively improved communications. Obviously, that, that goes without saying. Um, I don't know I, when we were when we were in the uh, senior center. Uh, I asked if there was anyone who had T-Mobile um, service. One person raised their hand. Now there was 40 people in that meeting. Maybe 40, 50 people. Uh, one out of 50. Uh, so. Let's just say one out of every 50 Cleo residents has has T-Mobile. That's that's a good enough good enough number. And, and what they're hoping is, hey, I'm going to serve the clients that I have out there, and I'm going to increase my button, my customer base because now I'm going to be a player on Cleo. So um, that's going to uh, increase uh, their uh, uh, communications out here in the city. Um, <clears throat> you know, one that has a lot of people threw out 5G. This is not a 5G site. Um, it's not going to be a 5G site. Um, and there was there was talks about that. I don't have uh, the specifics from the gentleman who did present uh, present uh, on that. But this site will not be a 5G site. Um, and this will also insist, uh, assist on bolstering emergency services and E911 capabilities. Um, there's a big thing called FirstNet, which is First Net Res First Responders Net Network, um, that is uh, going to be uh, benefited uh, by the installation of this tower. Um, so that's that's something else uh, for the public. Uh, that this also uh, improves and is a benefit to the community. Additional coverage maps, these were the ones that were presented uh, when we met at the senior center. So as you can see, these are just different colors. Uh, they, may be, they might be a little bit easier to, to follow. Uh, you, could, you could clearly see that Cleelum uh, has a coverage gap. That is Cleelum uh, with uh, a new tower at the 50-foot rad. Uh, if we were to build a 50-foot tower, and then uh, the 150 foot that we are requesting, I mean, that, that speaks for itself. That covers the entire town. <clears throat> um, again, this is just a close up of, of the, the town without the, uh, without the site. Um, so that's, that's the last slide that I have. That's pretty much the end of my presentation. Um, I, 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 I want to close by saying I, this, this is my job. It, it's, it, I didn't select Cleo. I didn't come out here purposely to make these guys uh, upset uh, to try to uh, uh, spoil the community as aesthetics. This is part of technology, and it, it's growing everywhere. Uh, Cleo is one of many towns uh, that are being affected by new cell tower needs. Uh, I have one tomorrow in Pueblo County, Colorado, which I'm flying out to uh, tomorrow morning. I'll be doing this again. I do it every week. Um, it is not personal. Uh, and I do understand and I appreciate uh, the fact that they come out and they are supporting their community and they are so passionate about this. Um, cell towers are cell towers. I, 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 you know, it's lipstick on pig. You can't make a cell tower beautiful, but it's a need. Um, and everybody in this 
room, a woman is that. There's not one person here with that cell phone in the pocket. Um, so it is a sign of the times. Okay. So it's a uh, it's a sign of the times. Everybody has. Um, we are uh, we're a facilitator of a need, and it's a national need. It's a federal need. It's stuff that. That, that folks are using, people are getting rid of uh, their home phones um, and are using cell, phone, cell phones as their main point uh, of access and communication. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we uh, go into the public portion to receive your comments, I'd like to uh, step back and give you an opportunity uh, to hear from the commissioners. Uh, oh. Directed at me? No. Oh, okay. No, sorry. No, that's all right. Just a little housekeeping that I need to do. Uh, I will ask the commissioners reviewing this application tonight if they have had any ex parte contact or any personal or business interest in this application or have made any prejudgments of the request before us. I will start with Matthew Wand. No. No. Okay. Nope. No. 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 And I have had none. Uh, with that, uh, I will give uh, an opportunity to the audience here to challenge any of the statements made by the commissioners. Yes, sir. Are you opening the hearing? I Apparently, is that what we're doing or what? Just one moment. Can you officially open it? Yes, please. Okay. I'll officially open the public hearing uh, for the cell tower application. Um, would you also let people know how long they have to speak and do you need a cell phone? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to do that after this, but that's okay. Well, he needs to do it. No. <laughs> um, are you responding to the commissioner? Is that my question to the commissioner? Or are you? Going to make a public statement. I'm going to make a public statement. Okay, hold on a second. So there is nobody here that is challenging. Well, I'm, excuse me, part of it I am going to respond to. Okay, that's the question before you. Okay. Before I open the spot. Oh, back. I see. So can I clarify really quick? Because I think there's some confusion. So um, in the code, in the law, it says that they have to state whether or not they have um, a, an interest or um, a conflict of interest. And this would be the part, not for the general comments, but just to speak on whether or not there are conflicts of interest. So those people that want to speak on that would go ahead of you on this report. Uh, I don't quite understand what you mean. But these, these commissioners just stated that they do oh. not have conflicts of interest. They, they don't work for the applicant, yeah, you know, et cetera. Yes. So right now, the only thing we are going to be talking about before the main hearing and the general comments on the applications is whether or not anyone has any um, issues with the statements that the commissioners just made about their conflicts of interest. No, I might have a question that fits that. What, okay. what are we being paid in exchange for lease on property? Mr. What's the city of Cleona being paid for that? Do you want me to sit down? Um, if you don't have a comment on the conflicts of interest, then we'll ask you to just um, wait for a moment. Sure. And so if any, you can go ahead and walk up to the podium if you have any comments on the statements that the commissioners just, just made. We're not taking questions right now. This portion is just for comments on whether or not the commissioners have any conflicts of interest. Okay. Yeah. I just feel that this amount the city is being paid for the lease is well below the industry standard. You don't have your time to make that comment, so. There, everyone will get a chance to speak who wants to speak right now. This is just a specific portion to, to respond to the statements made. My name is Michael Lancaster, and I live on Montgomery Avenue. Um, my question is that I have read on Facebook that there is someone on the board that has already made up their mind. Uh, is that, am, I, am I incorrect in, in saying that? There, was some, uh, there were comments made on, on, on Facebook. Yeah. People have made comments that I've made up my mind. It's untrue, but there have been comments on Facebook that I've made up my mind. And that's untrue. Oh, that, I, that was a question. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I'll take, I'll do a question. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, okay, I'm closer. Yes, you are. <laughs> Yay. Um, my 
comment or question, I guess, is to Mr. Lund. My name is Linda Lynn. I live at 802 East 3rd Street in Brown. He is the co-founder of an internet marketing company who relies on the internet. How is that not a conflict of interest when your business will be benefiting from better coverage? Can you explain to me how my business will be benefiting from better coverage? You own a market, an internet marketing company. So you, well, according to him, we're going to all have this fabulous coverage now. Okay. So how, how is it not a, a conflict of interest if your business is in the internet marketing? I mean, does, does everybody else who owns businesses? No, I'm talking to you. No, I'm, I'm just talking to you. I understand nobody that. Nobody else is on the commission but you. I, do you want, can I respond? Sure. So most businesses now use the internet to transact business. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't see how that's a disqualifier. But internet is. Commission. These people aren't on the commission. I mean, Pam owns a small business, Hawk uh, Outdoors. An they probably an internet marketing business. No. no. Okay. Anybody but they... else have an internet marketing business? I still don't understand the. I guess I don't oh, understand. You know, you're not that young. You're playing dumb. Excuse you're me. Not that dumb. You're not that dumb. You're not that dumb. We don't have to discuss it. They yeah. can just take the comment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Just no response. Okay. okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Okay. I am. You're right. I am a Excuse me. Let's keep order. Well, tell him back there to keep his mouth shut then. State your name and... My name is John Cavanaugh. I'm 12 West 3rd. Okay. I want to know if, there, if the commission has pursued the information of city employees. Has there been any uh, ex parte communication with any city employees promoting this business transaction? This is just regarding the commissioners here at this point. And I'm asking the commissioners, have you asked the employees if there has been ex parte communication with the customers? When we open this up to the public for comment, please come back up and make sure that's on the record. But I'm asking the have you, any of you asked any of the employees of the city? The ex parte uh, communication is with us in regard to our ability to hear this Okay. Fairly. So there not is a possibility, the sir. I'm asking the commission now. Is there a we possibility? Are, we are not city employees. Okay. I'm asking the question. Do you know if there's been any... Mr. Questions? Chair, I would rise to a point of order and ask that you call him out of order for continuing to ask the same question. It is out of order. Please come back up when we have the ask that question. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Uh, I have another question for the commissioners. Have you uh, done a site visit? Yes. 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 No. Never have stopped. I saw. Okay, so you have done a site visit. I have done a site visit. Okay. Um, I will now open the public hearing. Please uh, limit your comments to three minutes. We have a lot of comments I'm assuming that we're going to take. Um, Come to the podium. Put us your name and address. Do you need a timer, or are you going to just keep? I can time if you have a timer. Dean, what is My name is Patricia Corpazzi Preston. I live at 906 West Second, and uh, I do have some objections. Um, we have a lot of wind in here. A lot of wind. Many, many days are very windy, and you're up on a hill. That can get it possibly fires, really bad fires. A couple of years ago, we had one way up on um, Jolly Mountain, and we almost had a back leak. So we did have to back leak somewhere in Roslyn. So the potential for a fire out of control is there. Also, this now impacts our animals. So they are much, once more pushed out of their home. 
and they come, come, they're coming more and more down here to the town. So I think that is not good. People do go up to that part. They meditate. And this week I've been talking to some youngsters, like between 13 and 17 or so, and they do go up there to gather. Now I'm rather having them in the outdoors rather than in their home. What, looking and playing with these games and stuff, it's not good for them in many ways. And the radium frequency now in our towns, everywhere, has exploded. I think it was a hundred million times from our grandparents. And that might be my age, which I'm sick. But um, yeah, so that means from your microwave on up to your cell towers and everything else, we're putting more and more. Now we have a small town here. And you're right, there's, there are lots of things going on, good things in Cleon, and that's wonderful. But we want to preserve some of our land where people can go and be quiet. Now you say that, uh, talked about the um, way you can look at it, or the view. Well, the thing about going up there, you don't want to see the view. You want to meditate. Now, as for you, what I heard, the contract says that they can put benches and certain things. So if it's a gift to the city, I don't understand how you cannot do what the request of it when it was bequest to the city. And so that doesn't make sense. Does that mean he can take the land back from the city? I don't know. If are they following the contract? And it does bring health problems. Um, one of the things I was reading was that the, one of the health problems, which aren't yet, they're just starting to figure out, it's like an allergen. You get too much of that stuff. You start to feel just like sick and tired and watery eyes and just can't go do anything. Like you have the flu all the time or something. So there are new and new, much more information about the health impact. And uh, our natural resources are to one's only quickly. What we have, we would like to keep. We would like to see the city respect the citizens. Okay, thank you, and I think this is about free. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I have some indoor here I wanted everybody to be able to read and look at also at some point. Hi, my name's uh, Tim Reynolds. I live on 208 West 3rd. I grew up here, went to school here, uh, played on the exact spot on the hillside where the tower is supposed to go. Um, <coughs> what I found is that uh, the Romanzini Institute in Italy actually did a, they called it a lifelong study, it's a long-term study of what would be considered permissible uh, exposure to cell tower radiation. And uh, they, they concluded factually it is carcinogenic. It causes cancer. There's no question. Um, uh, and the permissible part would be what they would say would be within 15 to 1400 feet of a cell phone tower. And I don't know if you know how far 1500 feet is, but well, the space angle is 600 feet, so if you put that end to end twice and added 300 feet, you're talking about a hillside that would, uh, the, the dangerous part of the signal would be go all the way across town and most of the way either end of town. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is all factual, it's not even arguable. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, and the World Health Organization classified that exact level of uh, exposure in the same carcinogenic class as auto exhaust and DDT, the pesticide. <coughs> so, it, it, if, you know, I understand they're looking for a place here to put a tower because they need one, but right on the hillside that's barely above the town, it's, it's not even up and out of the way. It's, you know, and these don't transmit horizontally, by the way, folks. And we were told that before, that's, that's not true. So, um, there's so much information on it that it's flat out factual that within 14 to 1500 feet, it, it causes cancer. It's Carson McKenna. And everybody please take one copy of each of these and 
educate yourself. That's two of about 30 things that I found. Oh, and just so you know, <laughs> I'm ex-Army. My, my MOS was 26 Yankee, which is satellite communications. I kind of know a little bit about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Can I ask some questions? Can I ask some questions? Oh, oh, no. I, I, don't think you, I don't think you were at the... Excuse me. Yeah. 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 So can I continue with my question? And it, it can Excuse be answered me. much less than There are no questions at this point. Please. But I think I have an excellent point. No. Please. You have an opportunity if you want to come to the mic. I'll certainly come to the mic, but I do have a question rather than I feel that can I don't know what to saw on the record. I'm trying to help you. I I don't know what are you being paid in exchange for the lease on your property? Our property. Excuse me, yes. um, commissioners. Um, anyone who steps up to the mic, if we can get your full name and your address. James O'Reilly. I actually live in South Cleona. Okay. But it's not that far from here. We have kind of a funny arrangement dating back to the coal mining days. We have all these little towns. There were so many different ethnicities that they split the place up kind of in a funny way. But I sometimes worry that we're giving our community away in yes. little tiny pieces. You know, and I want to make sure that we are properly compensated for this and that we were represented by a law firm whom there are law firms that handle this specifically and will negotiate with this gentleman here to ensure that we're receiving the industry standard pay for that property and a signing bonus. I'd also like to ask, what was your signing bonus on the lease? Commissioner Clark, can I just address this? Yes. The lease is on the website. And I'd be happy to give you that information after the hearing. I could call you. I called you the other day. You did. Thank you for your okay. call. Okay. And, and so my message was understood then. I understood. And my question, statement. and you get my point, that our community is changing rapidly and we're losing little pieces of it. So. And Mr. O'Reilly's statement, which is a comment that um, will be in the record, was that the the tower lease rate should be one hundred thousand dollars per year. Now I, I like to shoot high. I like to aim there high. We go. <laughs> but but we're, now in all honesty, is yeah. what the company is going to pay Mr. O'Reilly? Does it meet the Mr. O'Reilly? Mr. O'Reilly? Excuse me. Yeah. I think I think I've been heard though. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Eichmiller, please step up if you'd like to make a comment. Thank you. I'm James Eichmiller, or Jim Eichmiller, most of you know me. Um, I'm a newbie here. I've been 33 years. At 109 West 3rd Street, uh, I was on the council for 12 years. Um, <clears throat> As a member of the uh, city council, uh, we acquired the property from the Millers several years ago. Purpose to designate a park area and to keep that hill attractive out there. Um, had I known at the time the tower could be built on what was a protected park, I would have voted no. Um, council had good intentions acting on behalf of our community. As it stands now, I feel we may have been hoodwinked. In other words, we weren't aware at the time that this could occur. And uh, so I had some concerns on that. The members of the community were all, I wouldn't say ecstatic, but they certainly were not uncomfortable with our decision we made at that time. Uh, contrary to what we're seeing going on now. Folks are pretty upset. Uh, I think more maybe some re misrepresentation, or maybe <clears throat> not so much misrepresentation, but information didn't get out. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, something's happening with that property that was not intended. What does the uh, City of Glenelg uh, benefit from this project? Uh, the citizens of Glenelg worked hard to enhance our environment. I see this activity as a blight on those efforts. Mm -hmm. And so I hope you seriously consider what the members of the community are saying, you know, is this is our home 
and a big tower up there. And you know, I don't know if it will have a beacon on top, but maybe that's going to tell us where Cleon is now. I hope that the corporation, sir, knows how to pronounce Cleon and where we're at. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, I understand that legally you can't consider the health part of this. Excuse but me, Mr. McCormick, can you please state your name and address? Uh, Kent McCormick, 302 East 4th. Thank you. Okay, I moved here 10 years ago because my wife had cancer. We lived in Republic and we moved down here to be closer to the doctors. She beat the cancer and, she, and we, we liked our environment here and we've stayed. But now with this tower going up, I'm afraid for my life again. I don't know if any of you have ever been with a loved one that's had cancer and gone through the battle. And if you have, you understand. And you understand why I'm so upset. It's right behind my house. And uh, the exposure, you know, you can look at it any way and, and they will try to tell you all kinds of things, but I've given the city the thing about the school children at Ripon Elementary School that all got cancer. Four school children, three teachers, and two preschoolers that live next to the school. And you can contact them. You can fact check it. You can do anything you want. And there's nothing you can say about it. Secondly, the Los Angeles Fire Department got a specific exemption because of neurological damage done by cell towers. And I have that exemption, the section, the number, everything. And you can fact check that. They were having problems with the <coughs> firefighters because they were next to a cell tower and they were there 24-7 and they started having all kinds of neurological effects. And I have a contact person you can contact in Los Angeles. So, no. That's true. Okay. And then, i got a, another little thing here. The insurance policy. Did you look into their insurance policy? This is, from what I've read, and I could be wrong. I'm, I'll, I'll admit that right up front. Some of these tower companies, their fire insurance is $50,000. Their property and damage and death insurance is $1 million. The, the verdict, I mean, the um, Taylor Bridge fire caused DOT and two um, of their contractors over $60 million. And 300 people lost their homes. And don't think these things don't occasionally catch on fire. It's very rare. But who would have thought Taylor Bridge would have started a fire? And who is going to make up for the loss if that thing does create? Who's going to make? Who's going to pay if their limits are reached? I think I've said my piece. Thank you. I live at 3rd and Wright, 315 North Wright Avenue. Um, and uh, I, I just want to, I guess, remind or ask who is it that the council represents? Because I'm assuming that it's the city of Clay Ellen that is represented by, by the council. And, 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 and I don't have any judgments about, you know, entertaining any sort of ideas, but but I don't think that T-Mobile is your constituents. I think we are the constituents. Yes, yes. yes. exactly. Yes. If one out of 50 people in Cleveland have T-Mobile, that's, that's a grand total of 40 people that probably have already considered switching to one of the existing <laughs> barriers that has better service. I just think there's a lot of risk here. I think there's a lot of evidence. Some of it is controversial. Some of it is you know, 
Uh, but in terms of the scientific uh, evidence, I, I, I think there's enough question. If, if I, my understanding is that the, at least the first um, person, first tenant on that tower would be paying 2000 a month, mm -hmm. which equals a grand total of $1 per resident of Cleelum. And I don't think that it's worth the risk. And I don't think it's the, worth the risk even for, um, for the city of Cleelum to be potentially facing lawsuits if there are health issues. Um, I think there's other ways to raise money. I do understand, you know, I, I've got a smartphone. I understand there's technology. I also personally, uh, two and a half years ago, was in an accident, had a concussion, had post-concussion post syndrome, and I've spent two and a half years regaining my health, regaining, regaining my brain. I've been very sensitive to Wi-Fi. My office would literally look out at the tower. So I'm, and I just bought that a year ago. I'm not, I'm not happy, I'm not comfortable. I feel like it's too much risk for way too little gain. And, um, and regardless of whether we're talking about the Miller's property or some other property, I would just urge you, um, you know, if, if there has to be a cell phone tower, and I would sure really question that assumption, <laughs> I would say let's get it, you know, 1,500 plus feet away from the residents. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Greg Barr. I uh, live at 407 East 3rd Street. Um, I've lived there for 44 years. Um, if I was 20 years younger, I could throw a rock and hit the cell tower, cell tower from the back of my property. Um, Kent over here, he could probably throw a rock right now and hit <laughs> that cell tower. Um, and I don't think that there's anybody in this room that is against this cell tower per se. I think it's the location of this tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. Now, the gentleman here said that there was a perfect site right over here. That they it was disregarded because it was going to get in the view of Peel Point. I would just as soon look at that tower or look at Peel Point over top of that tower than to walk out my backyard and look up 100, probably about 350 feet at a cell tower. And you can take a ride over there and see where I live. And I don't know if anybody has been over there yet to see where these people are. There's plenty of them here that live within a stone's throw of that tower. That property up there was, was donated to the city as a park and the city just jumped up and down and accepted it and said oh boy this is going to be great we'll do anything you want us to do with that thing as a park okay there's not very many green spaces left in this city we've got the Y park that's been put together we've got the third street park that's put together we've got the one on the swimming pool that's been put together now we're going to fill this park up with industrial sites because when this one gets put in up there what's to stop the next one and there's going to be next ones so that's all i got Susan Olson and we live at 312 East 3rd Street. Uh, I wish I had more of the history of this issue, but I am here just to support what the other people have said coming through. We object to the site and believe that everyone here, it's so important to listen to what they say, the voice of the people. Uh, we're glad that you're taking the time to listen to everybody. Again, on record, we object to the location. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you.
My name is uh, Joanne Dobbs. I have a piece of property at 312 East Fork. And, my, you know, I invest in properties, small investor. And <clears throat> I think that's going to cause a downfall on the property value, sir. So, so you know, I, <clears throat> I'm not sure about you guys, but would you like a tower in the back of your property? I mean, do you think personally that would affect your values? Probably would. I'm Geraldine. <coughs> Excuse me, Geraldine Hogan, and I live at 720 East Third Street. And I'm a newbie. I'm not 30 years, but I moved here because I wanted the small town effect. I've taken my grandchildren up in that park several times to do climbing, and that's what I expected it to be, which would be a park. I am curious if anybody's done any environmental impact, because having walked on the road, I can't imagine how they're going to get any heavy equipment, anything in there to build this tower without bastardizing that hill. I also um, have walked, my family lived up on 6th, and I know that in the winter, once that spring water starts coming down. I'm guessing the guys that live down on 4th are going to have a little extra waterfall coming down onto their place because I know there's already breeding problems there. And again, um, I believe that it was donated at the park. It needs to be kept that way. We moved here to be in a rural area. There's other places that it can happen. John Calvin, I live at 312 West 3rd Street. Uh, there was a little snide remark, I believe, maybe it wasn't a snide remark, but uh, regarding the collection of petitions, I collected five pages of, of that petition, and uh, last night, in 300 block of 3rd Street, there were three residences with no one home at the time. Aside from that, all people on the street that I live on sign those petitions. And if one street is opposed, perhaps the whole town is. And for the politicians and bureaucrats that, uh, that are listening, either now or in the future, then uh, maybe this isn't what you want to do. And uh, regardless of uh, the opinions of the Planning Commission, like I say, the majority of the sample residents do not want this. Each of them said they would prefer to have a park up there. And uh, my ambition and goal setting into this is with respect to health. I'm curious, uh, which of you has an engineering degree? We're not answering you know? questions. Okay. Well, I'm just throwing it out there. I do have an electronics engineering degree and I'm not favorable with the rest of technology applying this to people. Um, I looked into and signed up with 5G appeal and 5G shouldn't come next. This is a staging point for 5G. I don't think it's, it's necessary. But once again, the people on my street do not want this. And I also collected a whole lot more signatures of people in this town that do not want it either. I don't believe you should vote favorably for this location. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make a comment? Linda Leanne, 802 East 3rd Street. I'm sorry, can you repeat your name again? Linda Leanne, 802 East 3rd Street, Palm. And my opposition is, I have two parts of my opposition. First is, um, I'm second generation in this park. It would honor this family. And then you guys turn around and decide you're going to let the cell tower be put on it. And 
I think it was done in a very underhanded way. I just yes. found out about it when I read Mr. <coughs> Miller's letter in the Tribune. That's when I found out about it, and I live here, and I'm and I am engaged with the community. So I think there's a lot of people that didn't know about it. And also, the second part is um, the residents who live there. They do not deserve to have this monstrosity in their backyard. <laughs> guy said, well, you know, look at this picture here. You look up here and you can see it almost looks like a tree. You can paint it green, you can paint it brown, you can paint it fluorescent orange. We know what it is. It's not about what it looks like. That's right. Is there anyone else here that would like to make a comment? I've only lived here a few years, about 40. Brad? <laughs> My name's Brad Page. Thank you. I live at 112 West 5th Street. It's a thousand feet from the side of the tower. I say no. This gentleman said 1,500 feet earlier when he was speaking that you can be affected by. No, you are. You are. Yeah. I say no. I want to live here for another 40 years. Thanks, God. Providing. Thank you. My name is Kathy Barr. I live at 407 East 3rd Street. Um, the, the thing that's, that's kind of gotten to me, this whole, this whole thing, the, is it the Planning Commission that is doing all of the downtown work, the bumping out of the streets, the, the gorgeous uh, lights, the hanging plants? I mean, is that all part of... I mean, here's, here's this, these people that are working to make Cleveland beautiful, okay? Then you look out over here, and in the wintertime, that's probably the most gorgeous bridge over there with all the snow on it. It's, you're talking about um, not wanting to see it on Peel Point. Right over there, it's probably the prettiest part of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're going to destroy it by putting this on top of this. deals with this thing. And I agree, they were, I mean, there is a contract. The contract says that it's to be used as a park and a park only. But, at the time, uh, now mind you, we've owned that property since, I think, 58. So, <clears throat> if we were going to make money off it, my uncle was in the real estate business, my family was in the lumber business, we'd have probably found something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> but we kept it as it is. And I remember my aunt said, <clears throat> uh, keep that property like it is. Don't, don't change it. She lived right at the bottom of where uh, that rest home is now. Part. So <clears throat> the intent was always, and with the council, and with the mayor, and with the, uh, the planner at the time, was to and that, that even goes back further, that goes back to Gary Burns' time, was always to keep that hillside. And they were always talking about giving it to him. And my aunt wasn't in the mood to give it to him at the time. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, 
So I, I had it and I paid taxes on it and took care of it for, I guess, about 10 years. And I finally, I came down and I said uh, to the planning commissioner, the planner, I said, hey, let's think about doing something with that property up there. And he says, well, what do you want to do? I says, I don't know, how about I give it to you? And he says, that worked. <laughs> and I said, the one thing I want to make clear is, is I want it to be used as a park and not to be developed into anything. And so they took the water off of that property and gave me the ERU connections for the amount of taxes I paid on it, we did on it, and whatnot, which was my compensation. The property was appraised at 600000 And so, you know, we made the deal, we wrote it up, and uh, nothing in this contract has been fulfilled yet. Nothing. And, in fact, it wasn't even made a park until we filed a lawsuit against the city. The day afterwards, it was made a park. Wow. So, I don't know if there's something going on in the back room or not. But, uh, anyway. Selecting 310 West 4th Street. Um, I, the LTE coverage map is not up anymore, but I can tell you with AT&T I get LTE coverage from one end of West 4th to the far end east of East 4th. Coverage is not an issue with the correct area. You know, and I can understand technology, but put the thing up on the hill where it's away from residents. And that land, as Mr. Miller said, was donated as a park, a park only, not for other uses. A park, that's all. And that's all I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other question. There are no questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. No comment. Okay. Again, my name is Michael Lancaster, I'm at 519 North Montgomery, <coughs> and uh, I'd just like to say, back in the 80s, I was uh, in law enforcement in uh, the city of Issaquah, and at the time, a lot of the city of Issaquah that you see now was not supposed to be that way. <laughs> it was guaranteed that it would be left green and everything else, and you see what it is today even though it was guaranteed to not happen. Uh, we've only been here four years, but when I moved in, I was told, your property next door, that's going to stay a park. It's a park and it's going to stay that way. And that was part of the decision of, of purchasing the, the piece of property that I purchased. And now I'm going to have a nice cell tower to look at because I'm at the side of it. <coughs> I think the city needs to do the right thing. I think the city needs to honor the contract and honor the intent of the contract. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and do the right thing. And that's why we all move here. That's why we live here. <coughs> it's a small town and we do the right thing. Uh, I don't know what this is going to do to my property value. Uh, yeah. Shudder to think. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of our other property values along third and fourth and whatnot, as well as the fact that I am a disabled veteran and I'm home all day long, most every day. So I'm in, if there is a medical thing, I, I don't know. The papers all say there is. I don't need any extra help in that department. Thank you and let's do the right thing. Dorothy Olson, 312 East 3rd Street. I want to thank the volunteers on the planning committee. I know you have a lot of work ahead of you and you take the time for the meetings and are interested in the city. 
I, I just want to say that we live here on East Third, West Third, Second Street. We don't live in Sancadia or, <laughs> yeah. or up in, I used to live in Lawson, I didn't know. But this is our home and we choose to live here and we want to protect it. We want to have a nice place to look out in the evening and see the trees up above our, my house. And I, I'm really imploring you to consider very thoughtfully your decision. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <laughs> My name is Stephen Harper. I'm at 616 West 2nd Street. I'm Councilman for the City of Portland. It's been said uh, by many as a byword in our uh, in our great states that if you throw enough mud, some of it will stick. And uh, I don't I don't know that anybody has intentionally tried to malign anybody uh, personally. But I think that a lot of questions, open-ended questions that have been aired here tonight, legitimate questions and I believe also illegitimate questions, have brought into question the motivation of the city council of yourselves deliberating. Uh, as you have not deliberated yet on this. Uh, I would like to speak to the fact of the remuneration of the city. The city uh, passed an ordinance this last Tuesday uh, declaring that any money, potential monies, again, there's no, no decision has been made because it still goes before a planning commission, but that the monies made on this would be put into a park reserve fund to be spent specifically on the beautification of the parks. Also, other monies have been commingled with that, beginning with tax uh, allocation of about $5,000 and other things named out. So um, it's really not lawfully a consideration for the deliberations here, but I thought as the question was aired publicly, it should certainly be answered publicly. When I was elected, one of the conditions of being elected was to stand before uh, the people present and to raise my right hand and to swear uh, allegiance that I would protect and defend the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States of America and the laws of the United States of America. And then second, that I would uh, defend the laws of the state of Washington. Thirdly, that I would defend and uphold the laws of the state of, or the, of the city of Cleon at the same time as to apply uh, reasoning that I would represent my constituents. And, as a fa and, and I, ideally, when you're elected into office, you think you can balance all of these and do all of these. And sometimes, uh, let's say my personal uh, experience, you can uh, do all of these, and at best, you try to balance uh, these loyalties with the favor of tipping them to the, the loyalty of the people that elected you. That's the only comments I have to make. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Thank you. If it's a comment, not a question. Do you get a second turn at it? No, I didn't use all my time. <laughs> uh, I would like not to, but uh, thank you. That's all right. Again, anybody else? <laughs> there you go. I'm Raymond Hill. I live in the town of Cleelum, and I am sick and tired of greed and things being done non-transparent. And I think the way this thing came about, I saw a small little article that there was going to be a hearing on a cell tower. Nowhere did it say that the cell tower was going to go on a park that had been donated to the city. So I don't feel like I had full disclosure. Mm -hmm. I moved here 23 years ago from Redmond, which was once a lovely place, until <laughs> they sold out for greed there. And yes, I have a cell phone. I have Verizon. I get excellent service. But um, I think we have to consider very carefully what we're doing. When I walked up one day to this park, there were little children playing in the houses right behind. And I thought, well, their life is going to be a cell tower behind them. 
Is that worth $2,000 an hour? What's their life going to be? This land was donated graciously to honor a family that I know something about. At 23 years, I'm still considered a newcomer. But um, I think they need to be honored. And having a cell tower in their park, I think, is not honoring. I do believe there's some health risk to the people. I don't believe it that needs to be this close to people. Whether you believe it or not, there's people on both sides of that argument. But it does not need, when we don't know for sure that it's safe, does not need to be that close to people. Thank you. Thank you. Again, anybody else? <laughs> I will close this portion of the public hearing so there will be no more comments received from this application. Um, at this point, the commissioners uh, typically go into uh, deliberations on this. However, uh, I am going to make a suggestion that based off of your comments tonight, based off of the materials uh, that have been submitted to the city of Cleveland, uh, that we consider uh, moving uh, our deliberations to our next meeting and take the time, which is two weeks, I believe, uh, to allow uh, appropriate review of this material. I would make a motion to that effect. Appreciate everybody's comments, and that's a lot of signatures, and there's a lot of comments that came in that I haven't had a chance to read thoroughly, so I would also appreciate that opportunity. If you make a motion, I'll second it. I make a motion that we, we postpone the decision on this, on these two permits until our next meeting. Okay. Do we have a second? Is there any more discussion on this? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thank you all for your comments. And so thank you for your time. Uh, and we will uh, revisit this on our meeting on September 3rd, 5 p.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. That makes it very relaxed. 6 p.m. That's where we're going to go. No, no, no. Is the meeting finished? No. Hey guys, the meeting's not finished. Hi everybody, the meeting is not finished. Let's show some respect. Come on, the meeting's not done. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, any new business? No. No. It's <laughs> not on the agenda item. Can we get can we get order though, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Huh? Can we get a word? Yes. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Please. We're still conducting our meeting tonight, so please allow us that respect, please. Uh, citizen comments on non-agenda items. Any comments? Public appearances, we have none. Unfinished business, um, I'm not aware of any. Staff report. Okay. Um, first off, I just want to say any comments that are um, provided to the city at this point are not going to be part of the record, I don't believe. I will look into that with the school, but um, it was for. Um, to bring it up during the hearing and then um, comments are closed past that point. I, actually, you have a comment that's not related to the topic, the immediate topic. Are you going to go back in? Uh, what, no. Would you repeat what you said? I didn't understand the word that you said. What I said was, now that the public hearing is over and it's concluded and the commission um, received all the public testimony and the petitions that were handed in ahead of time, any other public comment that are provided to the city are not part of this public record for these decisions at this point. Everything before the hearing would have been, or during the hearing. Okay. Um, I'd like Lucy to finish her portion and then I'll come back to you. Staff report. Um, thank you. 
I'm just going to, um, you have my staff report, but there's, um, and you've had it since last week when I delivered your packets, but um, just a quick overview of council um, at the last meeting um, on um, last week, the 13th. The Parks and Recre Recreation Committee was um, assembled uh, or reassembled. The mayor formally appointed the former planning commissioner, Devin Smith. Um, and Commissioner Matthew Lund to the City's Parks and Recreation Committee along with Council Person Beth Williams. So that, that reorganized um, the Parks and Recreation Committee because um, at least since I've worked here there hasn't been a meeting and so this was putting people that wanted to be a part of it and um, to, um, into that committee. And then there was a resolution passed for Parks, and Parks Reserve Account Funds so council passed resolution 2019-011 at their August 6th meeting. That the resolution is in your packet if you're interested in looking. This designates all current and potential funds from city-owned property known as Miller Guzzi Park to be added to the park reserve fund, which can be used for planning, design, construction, and other development of cities, parks, and trails system. Um, on the planning front for the planning department, on-call planning SCJ Alliance, Charity Duffy's here tonight. Um, we have lost our planning staff, our, um, our other planning staff besides myself, and um, we have a need for on-call planning. We decided not to fill the position permanently right now because um, doing some reorganization, and then it also allows us to only pay for what we're using right now to do that reorganization. Um, also, because we've lost the planning staff, I don't have the time to train someone new um, into the city, and an on-call planner that works for many cities is able to kind of hit the ground running um, with um, they're, they're teaching me things, I don't have to teach them things. So that's very helpful. Um, entering budget season, staff and um, SCJ Alliance will be begin by assessing the department staffing and resource needs for 2020 budgeting because of that staff absence. Um, for permitting, I, just, I told you at the last meeting um, that I was going to give you a list of the permits that are coming before you. Um, on August 20th, that's tonight, um, the hearing uh, for Vertical Bridge. On September 3rd, um, now you're going to be um, discussing and voting on that at the September 3rd meeting two weeks from tonight. And then also you're going to have a hearing on the Shoreline Master Program Amendment. It's a joint review process between the city and the Department of Ecology. Um, and that was due to um, comments uh, and a settlement agreement uh, with the Yakima Nation. They um, uh, pushed forward some changes in the counties and the city of Cleveland Shoreline Master Program. So now we are... Um, in, in compliance with that and we just have to have the public hearing to adopt that. On the tails of that, we're going to go into um, a longer term uh, periodic update, um, same term as with GMA, um, for the Shoreline Master Program. So we're going to adopt the changes now and then we're going to review it and adopt more changes later. That's just the way it has to go. Um, September 17th, um, we, I had zoning hearings scheduled. You remember the zoning code that we were looking at? Uh, expect that to come, but there's much more process involved in that than I had imagined, and so I'm looking closer to October uh, for hearings on that. Um, so we don't know what's happening at the September 17th meeting, but, um, and that's the, the last bullet there, the zoning ordinance and map amendments. Um, that's part of the development regulation amendments for the GMA, GMA periodic update. So we're not completely done with our comp plan. We're, we're done with the comp plan part, but now the development regulations part um, is coming. Uh, and that zoning ordinance map amendments is called an area-wide rezone. And so we'll have to have hearings and um, there's about, you know, probably 20 ordinance I had to write. So it's going to be, um, it's going to require a little bit of time. Other than that, in the staff report, you've got that resolution, and then you have the um, SCJ Alliance package that was received with our RFP that went out um, for their for bid for on calls. Do you have any questions on any of that? Okay. Exciting. Things are actually happening. There's a lot going on yeah. in the planning department, and um, you know, I just want to point out that um, my role in the city and the planning commission's role. And I'm only pointing this out because um, Commissioner Hawk is also one of our um, historic preservation commissioners and she asked for the historic preservation commission um, if I would talk about the role of the staff and the role of the commission. So I just wanted to point out that the role of the staff is to um, talk to people at the front desk, to intake permit applications, um, to review those applications based upon the law, um, report in those staff reports what if the applicants are meeting the basis of the law, which is on the back 
for this is on the back of the handout. These are the, these are the things that we can... Um, and that, that's the role of the planner, and to provide that information to the commission that they represent. And I represent the Historic Preservation Commission and the, and the um, Planning Commission as staff. So my role is just that, just to take in the permits, to turn them around, give the staff, or give the commissions the information so that they can deliberate and make a decision. Um, and then to ask, answer questions, take calls um, at City Hall. And that's just my role, just through these commissions. That's not what I do for a living. Um, so, but I just wanted to explain um, what the city staff that works at City Hall, that's, that's our role. Um, the decision makers of the, the commissions. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Let's step back before we adjourn. <laughs> um, yeah, a comment that's once again not Can you on the... Can you come up with a vote? Oh, yeah. um, Thank you. So this is a comment on a non-agenda item? Exactly. Just for the minutes? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the, as everybody knows, that the, the roads that kind of go up the ridge from here, they're basically all gated off now. And if you grew up here, that's pretty much where you went and whatever. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I grew up on that hillside. Uh, but uh, for example, if you go up Seven Hill and the road that goes up from, mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody knows the Lairds, but where it used to be Strip Mine Road, yeah. um, you get on that road and it's paved, and before you get anywhere near where anybody lives where they develop, it says private road. So at what point is that a private road? Because it says that as soon as you turn onto it, there's a sign that says private road. Mm -hmm. And it's nowhere near, I mean, you go further up and it's gated. But how is that a private road all the way down next to the, the regular road? Which road is it? Is the, the one, if you're up on Seven Hill, I can't remember the name of the road, but if you're up on Seven Hill, and it used to be the strip line road. I know, yeah, and it goes up to like the, the um, mountain bike tracks. Is it a yeah, is it goes, it? yeah, right past it. So, is it appropriate to comment? Well, I mean, I'll right. comment back yeah. this in generalities. A private road would be anything that's outside of the public right of way and hasn't been accepted as a public road. So it would be um, wherever the public right of way ends. And I know it's a circular answer, but right. um, no, you I could look it. at the plat maps and you could see where the public road ends and the private parcel starts. It would be on a, a private road would be seen as a on a parcel on a tax parcel, rather than if you if you go onto the assessor's website and you click on a public road, right. it shows up as no tax parcel. It's part of the public domain. Um, if that helps, so there's a way to right. look it up to determine where that. Okay. Where that is. I can't Because yeah, the only way right that could have gone from being a what was always completely public road to private road that far down would be if whoever purchased all the land that's getting developed up there, there's there's a, a dividing line as to where it's no longer where it's right. actually owned by whoever and right. not you know, so So they have these questions a lot in Roslyn because they have the Roslyn Urban Forest and it goes off into private property. Right. And for generations a lot of the land has been used by the public, but they're really on private property with permission, or maybe not express permission, but um, they weren't denied access, right, if right. you will. The people didn't fence their properties, so but but at any time they could. Right. So if that pro if that road was um, uh, private property and it's always just been allowed you allowable use that they've never made a stink about you using it, right. um, they are still um, able to discontinue use if it's their private road, unless there's some type of public easement on it for mm -hmm. public use. All right. yeah, but I mean, I'd be happy to talk to you about that at City Hall if you want more details about a specific road. Okay, what's your yeah. name again? Lucy Temple, I'm the city planner, and you can find me at um, City Hall. Okay, um, yeah. okay. thank you, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. <coughs> all right, that's all. Thank you. Okay, comments from
see, these are extra. My goodness. They're extra? Holy moly. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. What's that? Do you want another? Yeah, I'll take one. This was 